Hello, Generation Auto. I am welcomed with Velocity Reporter here, Rick DeBrule. Nice to meet you, Rick. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to see you. I noticed on your Twitter profile. That's a dangerous thing. Don't believe anything on Twitter right off the bat. You're self-described as a Velocity Reporter for Barry Jackson, Indy Sideline Reporter, a pit crew for ABC News, and you have the best job in the world and you can't believe they pay you for this. So how do you get that job? You know, I grew up a car geek. I, uh, I spent way too much time reading car magazines as a kid. I spent two hours in auto shop in high school every day. I worked my way through college as a mechanic. I am truly a car geek. Um, and, and over time, I just got lucky. I got into broadcasting, number one, and in local news. And then I decided I wanted to, you know, involve my hobby. And so I managed to get involved in first car racing and then eventually managed to get into the Bear Jackson auctions as well. So it's the perfect blend of my profession, which was broadcasting, and my hobby, which has always been cars. So I get to do my hobby as a profession. So you don't actually work, and they pay you to do this. <laughs> That's exactly right. Trust me, I, I always joke. You know, I, I grew up in the Los Angeles area. My dad was a, a milkman and a newspaper carrier, worked seven days a week. He worked. I goof off. Right. When was the first time you ever attended a Bear Jackson auction? You know, I moved to Phoenix in about 1978, and I'm going to guess my first one was probably 1980. At that point, it was a much smaller affair. It was held at Phoenix Municipal Stadium, which is a baseball stadium uh, near downtown Phoenix. Uh, so you've really seen Barrett Jackson grow quite a bit. When did you start working with Barrett Jackson through Velocity? Uh, my first on-air experience with Barrett Jackson was in 2003. Um, and even so, a, so a 23-year gap between attending <laughs> And working, did you ever imagine you'd be working this event? No, although as soon as they started doing the broadcast, I started trying to figure out how to get involved in it. I just, mm -hmm. just took me a few years to make it finally work. Mm -hmm. And what's the biggest change you've seen in those 23 years? Um, you know, it's changed on every level. Number one, just the spectacle. Uh, I mean, you know, as I, I was about to say that, you know, when, when we first did those auctions, when I first went to those auctions, it was a, in the stadium and there was a part swap meet in the parking lot. I mean, today, I mean, it's these massive tents, there's manufacturer showcase, vendor showcases, spectacular cars. So, so the spectacle has changed, but then the type of car. I mean, back then it was all the pre-war exotics, and now it's, it's shifted over the last decade and a half into the American muscle era. Now, there's still pre-war classics here, but it's a broader range of collector cars. So over your years, when you've seen these cars come up onto the block, which one or two stands out in your mind as the most magnificent well, the most magnificent, it's, it's really more the spectacle associated with it again. I mean, I remember when the Shelby Super Snake sold a number of years ago for $5 million. That car stalled out at about a million and a half dollars. I thought it was done. And then suddenly a couple of bidders jumped in, and next thing you knew, it was selling for $5 million. I mean, that was a pretty special moment. The day the Batmobile sold, the original the Batmobile, original right? Batmobile, when it sold a few years ago, that was amazing to be in in this in the auction arena when that happened because it was like having a rock star pull in, you know, an aging rock star that everybody knew and everyone everybody wanted to be there for it. Yeah. Now, as a Velocity reporter, you're sort of the bridge between the viewer and the consigner and the Bear Jackson themselves. Is there a particular question that the viewers always come up to you and ask you? Boy, you know, to be honest with you, we just spend more time talking about cars than the broadcast. You know, people always want to know about one car or another car. Um, so, you know, that, that's what I love about this job. I get to talk cars with people. And, and whether I'm on, in, the, in the broadcast talking cars or whether I'm away from the broadcast and people are just coming up and wanting to know, well, when that 69 sold, did it have the right wheels? Or when that was 71, it whatever it was, was it correct? Was this, why did that one go for a lot of money when this one didn't? Now explain to people the difference between a reserve and a no reserve, other than the obvious, when the reserve's moved, it can sell. But why would a car sometimes be reserved and sometimes not? Well, a reserve simply means that there's a minimum amount of money that that car can sell for. Um, Barrett-Jackson traditionally has been a no reserve auction, meaning right. there's no, it can sell for whatever people bid. So some, you know, in some cases that means that could be very low, but most of the time, a car tends to find its market. I think it's an advantage, frankly, for the buyer because when you have two people bidding, you know exactly what that, it may sell low, it may sell high, but that's the true value of that car in that room at that time. So in no reserve auctions, what they can do is they can actually bid up to the reserve and then the crowd takes over. So I think a, a reserve, a, a no reserve auction is more honest, whereas reserve auction, when they're allowed to bid up to that minimum, sometimes... And that's when the frenzy really starts, doesn't it? 
when well, that happens. To be honest with you, it seems like a frenzy all the way along. When, you, when you're in here and you're listening to the auctioneers, it seems like a frenzy from the word go. Now, there's one particular car that our viewers have been following. It's a 77 Trans Am that was one of the, it's the last remaining car used for promotion of the movie. And that's here at Bear Jackson in the salon area. What do you think that car is going to do? What do you, have you heard any buzz about that? What's your expectations for that car? You know, it's, it's so hard to pin a number on those types of cars. Um, just like the Batmobile is a perfect example. Before that Batmobile sold, I would never have guessed it would have brought $4 million. But it was the Batmobile, okay? It was the George Barris car, and it had all the emotions tied to it. Um, if you grew up in the late 70s and early 80s, that era Trans Am is the collectible car. We've seen the values on the Smokey and the Bandit era cars, the Trans Ams, begin to grow over the last few years. Well, this is the car and the car associated with the movie that created that trend. So there's no reason why it shouldn't do better than the average bear. You know, the fact that they're going to have Burt Reynolds there. All those things are going to add to the spectacle. Where's the ceiling on it? Who knows? I mean, the only downside is it wasn't actually used in the shooting of the movie, just the promotion of the movie. But it was still a part of the movie. Yeah, uh, certified by Universal Pictures. Even the title says Universal Promo Car on it. So it's an authentic car uh, tied to the movie. Well, it's been great meeting you and uh, kind of turning the tables and interviewing you. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. For those of you on Generation Auto out there, tune into Velocity all week to catch Rick DeBrule on the auction block reporting on all these beautiful cars. Thanks again, Rick.